What's up, Star Shines? Sylvia Moonbeam here. And uh, the video you're about to watch has some audio issues. There's peaks and drops, and I did the best I can, so hopefully it's not too bad. <laughs> anyway, enjoy. So, as you can probably guess, um, or at least if you've been following long enough from my start, maybe, uh, you'll know that I was assigned male at birth. Um, my, my dead name doesn't necessarily matter, um, but when I was around, I want to say around 10, maybe it was even younger, I want to say it was maybe around seven or eight maybe i remember on my birthday um, my parents asking you know what i wanted or what i wanted to be when i grew up or you know one of those questions parents always ask their kids um and i remember this very clearly because i was leaned up against my bed kind of in this like fetal position um and i remember that i hadn't gotten dressed um, I remember that I was in my underwear. It was like one of those things where it was like I was getting dressed or in the process of getting dressed. My parents just came into my room and I was a little kid and it didn't really matter if I was in my underwear. Um, but I remember saying, I don't want to grow up. Because in my mind, and keep in mind since I was assigned male at birth, in my mind, my mental image of what an adult male looks like was my dad and my grandpa and you know my my dad is like 5'10 5'11 uh, my grandpa at the height of his height he was 6'4 um, he actually ended up shrinking a couple inches inches a little bit as he got older um, but he, I didn't want to be tall I didn't want to be kind of burly like they were and you know they both had these big full beards and I didn't want that to me that was not how I viewed myself I didn't want to be a man um you know my parents chalked it up to just I want to be a kid forever but for me looking back it was very much a clear I knew that I didn't want to be a man not that I didn't want to be an adult and growing up my parents did a lot of things that um, tried to get me very stereotypical things to try to get me to be more um, masculine and things like um, making me do Boy Scouts which I did for five years and I hated I didn't fit in hmm I wonder why <laughs> you know they tried to get me to do um, t-ball which I found completely boring. Um, I have never at all been interested in sports. Any of any sport, just completely zone out. I completely do not care. Um, and just like with t-ball, I was in the outfield, and I picked daisies and daffodils and gave them to my mommy because I wanted to make her happy, and I liked flowers. Um, you know like most little boys wink wink um you know i took a cooking class over the summer one year and uh it was going well but i liked it too much i was having too much fun and so i was even though it was like a six week class i was pulled out one or two weeks early without any real explanation <laughs> Um, my parents wanted me to do soccer, and I didn't really have any interest in it. Um, I've never been very aggressive. I've always been rather more defensive, more pacifistic, so I made a decent goalie, but I didn't really enjoy it. And for me, looking back, the signs were always there that I didn't necessarily fit in, per se. Um, I had a lot of friends at the time, when I was younger, who were girls. But none of my best friends were girls because they didn't have the same interests as me. Um, I liked 
Pokemon and Legos and Ben 10, which are traditionally masculine interests because, you know, my dad through Star Wars, Star Trek, and Stargate instilled a love of science fiction in me. And so I liked science fiction -y things. And that's not popular with girls, <laughs> at least not little girls. So um, most of my friends when I was younger were boys around my age. But as I've gotten older, it has been slowly becoming more equal to balancing out. So now all of my best friends are women, um, save for one. And that's <laughs> the guy living on the other side of that wall, my housemate Will. Um, he is basically the only guy I would consider to be one of my best friends. Um, which I'm hoping he can hear that through the wall. We do have pretty thin walls. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. I'd say this kind of, the, the, the place where the scales tipped was in 7th grade. In 7th grade, um, I learned what being LGBT was. I, at the time, didn't consider myself LGBT. Um... But I knew that I didn't fit in with the boys. I felt awkward being in a locker room. All these other boys were perfectly fine with changing in front of each other and like, you know, joking around without shirts on or in their underwear. And I was very uncomfortable changing in front of other boys. Um, yeah, I didn't at the time find them attractive at all. It was just didn't feel comfortable being around boys that were changing, and I didn't feel comfortable changing in front of boys. Um, but I, I dealt with it. Um, later on, when I would leave my middle school, in high school, I would change in one of the stalls because our bathroom and locker room was the same room, so I would change in a stall um, nine times out of ten. Um, but it was around this time that I came to the conclusion um, that I wasn't a guy. At the time, I didn't, um, since I was heavily sheltered by my extremely Christian mother, I didn't have the vocabulary to know what being non-binary or trans was. Um, but I'd say, looking back, that from about 7th grade um, to around the time I was 21, I, if I had that vocabulary, would have identified as non-binary um, because I knew that I was born in a male's body, but I referred to myself as like a not boy. Um, I joked that I was um, gay but into girls because based on my vocabulary at the time, that was the only way I knew how to describe who this was. <laughs> Um, and, and that kind of carried on until around college. I had a girlfriend at the time. Her name was Danny. I've, I think I may have mentioned her in previous videos, but um, she, we, 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 we were very good together. Um, I don't regret being in a relationship with her at all. But the reason we ended up breaking up was because I wasn't masculine enough for her. Um, I was too effeminate. Um, I would frequently joke that I was her gay boyfriend because I was very, <laughs> you know, if you know what I mean. Um, and so, yeah, we ended up breaking up and I actually haven't had any long-term relationship since then uh, not for lack of trying of course it's just you know look of the draw sometimes a, couple, a year about a year later um, I was 21 my best friend at the time suggested based on some of the things I'd been saying and some of the things I've been doing and had been acting that I maybe look into being what's transgender and based on my cultural knowledge at the time, I thought that a transgender person was basically just a, a cross-dresser. You know, someone who was, you know, their assigned gender at birth, and they're just dressed up as the opposite sex for fun. 
I didn't realize that being trans was an actual thing. And I looked it up, and suddenly everything made sense. Suddenly, all of this, this doubt and confusion over the years just clicked. It, everything kind of meshed into place. And while a couple of my friends have said that I kind of rushed into it, that I kind of, you know, officially said, you know, hey, I'm trans very quickly, it was because I didn't doubt it. Once I figured out, oh, I've always been this. This is just the word for it. As soon as I figured out the word, as soon as I figured out that trans was a real thing and the valid identity, I went, that's what I am. And that was when I first created my uh, my, my placeholder name, um, which was a, an effeminized, a, a effeminized version of my dead name. Um, and for about four years, I was going by Rayanne, which was my uh, placeholder name. I didn't know that was the name I wanted to have. I just knew that it was an effeminate version of my dead name. And so for the time being, that was what I was going with. And that was difficult that first year because I wasn't out to my family. It was only out to my closest friends, uh, mostly friends at college. And that lasted uh, about a year. Actually, a little over a year, about 13, 14 months. Until finally, I just couldn't handle it anymore. Um, in fact, actually, that summer, when I was still looking out to my family, um, my mother, who has always been um, LGBT-phobic, so to speak, um, essentially triggered me to a point where I basically told her point blank that she should have had an abortion and that she never really loved me and that I basically should just have run away run, run away from home and never come back years ago um, because I was at a, I was at a breaking point and that's one of the few times I've been at such a breaking point that I've just lost it um, but I've noticed that's when I started to notice a turnaround between my relationship with me and my mother was that I was trying to make her see the person I was now, and she was focused on the person I was then. Um, and so eventually I did come out to my family, and thankfully everyone in my family is accepting of me, except for my mother. She um, always viewed me as the me I was when I was in eighth grade, when I was about three inches taller, uh, excuse me, three inches shorter than her. I was her little baby, her little boy, um, and she's never really seen me as her big girl, which is sad because it has greatly damaged our relationship. Um, I don't really talk with my parents a lot now because I've moved out and I am independent, but I mostly, if I need to talk to my parents, talk through my dad. I kind of ignore my mom because she doesn't give me the respect that I have so earned. But, you know, over the years, I've slowly grown as a person. As many of you know, um, I am on HRT. I have been for almost three years now, which is crazy to think that it's been... Not three, goodness. I've been on HRT for almost two years now. Completely lost my uh, my math for a second. And that's been great. Yeah, um, it's been it's been great. I've, I've loved seeing the changes that I've had, and I love seeing the person I'm becoming. Um, I'm not wearing nail polish now, but I can, I've gotten a lot better at it. Uh, my body is changing. I'm getting curves. I know it's hard to see because I'm wearing these baggy shorts and a baggy shirt, but I do have curves. Uh, my face has become a lot more feminine. I don't grow hair as quickly. I'm actually going to be getting laser hair removal fairly soon to make it so I get hair even less, and eventually not at all. Um, I'm planning on getting my ears pierced soon. I am not wearing one right now, but I have started wearing chokers, and I'm planning on getting um, a very effeminate tattoo fairly soon. Um, one on my wrist, one on my shoulder, 
you'll see in a video when I get it done. Uh, so that's been kind of part of my journey, um, at least as identity. Um, garbage truck? I don't know. Let me close my window one sec. Hey, nice seeing you again. <laughs> uh, so, in addition to my journey of identity, it is also, there's also been a journey of um, interest as well, so to speak, of my, my sexual journey. Sexuality. That's what I meant. Sexuality. Uh, when I was, of course, um, before I was out, I identified as a straight male. And when I first came out, I identified as a lesbian. And then I quickly learned that despite having sexual interest, it didn't happen very often. I eventually learned that I'm far less sexual than I thought I was. That I'm, um, I'm not asexual, but I am demisexual. Um, the main difference, for those of you who aren't aware, is that essentially asexuality is that you don't feel sexual um, attraction. You, you, you can be still romantically attracted to someone, but you're not sexually attracted to anyone. For demisexual, it's you don't usually feel sexual interest, but every now and then you do, and for me that's about once every three to four weeks. Sometimes more often, but usually once every three to four weeks. And for me, it's a very passing thing. It's like a, oh, this is a thing. Oh, now it's gone. It's not like a, a crave, you know? That, that's weird to say, it's weird to say. Uh, but also my attraction over time has changed. I uh, used to say that I was, um, for a while I used to say that I was only sexually attracted to women, and then I was only romantically attracted to men as that evolved, um, and now I can safely say that I am romantically interested in everyone, thus I am pan-romantic now, um, and while I technically am sexually interested in everyone, for me that's not what I go for. A relationship for the romance, not for things associated with that, if you get what I'm saying. Um, so I'm, I identify as pan-romantic, uh, demisexual, and of course, as a trans woman. Um, and f at least for the time being, this seems to be kind of where it's stopped, or at least where it's stagnated. I don't really see where it can develop further. Currently, I'm still single, but there, I, to me, I'm okay with that because I have a lot of friends and a lot of people I care deeply about. Uh, for example, I have this friend right now named Mina, who I do have romantic interest in her, but I'd rather be her friend than have a failed romance with her because I know that if I have a failed romance, it'll just be essentially Danny part two. And I don't want that to happen. I'd rather just be her friend, and I consider her a good friend. I really hope she's not watching this. this. That'd be really embarrassing. <laughs> um, but it's kind of been my journey so far, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Um, hopefully they will be respectful, because I swear to Alaria, and cozy take me if I lie. If one of you asks me what I've got in my pants, I will block you. So, uh, until next time, I have been Sylvia Lorwin, aka Sylvia Moonbeam. And thank you all for watching, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye.